Hello and welcome to Microwave Laboratory. In this lab, we will see a typical microwave test bench setup using reflex klystron oscillator uh, as a microwave source. So, if you have directly came to this video, uh, our request is that please go back and see our earlier microwave lab videos so that you can get the basic idea about microwave test bench. So, in our earlier videos, we have used gun diode as a microwave source. But in this video, we are using a reflex piston based microwave test bench. So, this is a reflex piston tube, which is actually we have been supplied using this power supply. There will be two voltages, one is a beam voltage and other one is a repeller voltage. So, that will actually uh, required for operation of this reflex piston tube and this will act as a microwave oscillator. So, all the theoretical details you might have seen in your theory class. So, I am not going into the theory of this particular uh, reflex piston tube. So, what is the general setup? First, let us see this on a block diagramic representation. So, we have a klystron power supply. Then, we have a reflex piston oscillator. It is a klystron tube best. Then, we have an isolator which actually passes signal in forward direction only if any reflections are coming out from load side the isolator will not allow those reflections to reach to oscillator next to that we have a variable attenuator which can attenuate the microwave signal as per the position of micrometer plunger then we have a frequency meter which is a direct readout frequency meter which can be used to measure the frequencies in the x band from 8 to 12 gigahertz followed by we have a tune detector which is actually demodulating microwave signal and modulating signal and then we can use the power meter if we are using direct x band power meter then detector uh, is need not to be used but if we are using cro digital multimeter or vswr meter then we have to use the tune detector so we have different options to use as a output instruments so in this setup we have got a klystron power supply then the beam voltage and repeller voltage is supplied through this cable to the reflex piston tube. This cavity dimensions of the reflex piston oscillator can be varied by using this plunger which actually results into the variable frequencies at the output of this piston oscillator. Then we have an isolator which actually uh, passes signal in one direction only. If any reflections coming from the load, the isolator will not uh, passes those reflections to our source then we have a variable attenuator whose attenuation can be varied by varying the position of this plunger then direct readout frequency meter which is x band we can directly measure the frequency so later on we have a crystal detector and this is being connected through a bnc cable to cro as i am using for this video as output instrument so, before you switch on this piston power supply, there are two important uh, settings one has to ensure. Your repeller voltage knob should be fully clockwise since this is a negative voltage. So, that should be fully clockwise which ensures the minimum repeller voltage value going to your reflex piston tube. And at the same time, beam voltage should be fully anti-clockwise. That is again at the minimum position since this is a positive voltage. So, before switching on your klystron power supply, beam voltage should be fully anti-clockwise, minimum value and repeller voltage should be fully clockwise, again minimum value since this is a negative uh, voltage. Okay, so you can switch on from mains, ensure that your cooling fan is on which will protect overheating of your replaced piston tube and now you can switch on the power and you see this is the display and we have a meter select knob so if this is on REP the display will display a repeller voltage if you take it to the voltage position this will display a beam voltage so if I increase the beam voltage you can clearly see the voltage is increasing so you can increase voltage to sufficiently higher value in our case I will keep it at 220 volts now if you take this meter select to C it will display the beam current okay. so as of now you can see 13 milliampere is the beam current and if you change it to repeller as you know this is the repeller voltage so you can vary the repeller voltage by using this knob 
so these are the meter select knob beam voltage repeller voltage and display another knob which is available on this one power supply is the modulation knob so you have four options continuous wave am fm and external any one of them can be used for modulation purpose generally when we use digital multimeter so in that case we use continuous wave if we use uh, cro as a output instrument so we can see the pattern of square wave in case of am if it is select on fm so sawtooth wave can be observed on cro and even you can apply external signal through this bnc socket so we will also see that so first let us select this modulation as a am when it is on am so you have again two knobs one is the frequency can be controlled of amplitude modulating signal and amplitude of the uh, basic amplitude modulating signal can be modulating signal for am can be controlled similarly in case of fm frequency and amplitude of modulating signal can be controlled by using these two knobs okay so i have set it to am and now you can observe on the cro screen i will uh, change the repeller voltage and you can observe on the cro screen there will be a square wave so as i am changing the repeller voltage you can clearly see there is a square wave and if i change the frequency using this knob we can observe on the cro screen frequency of the square wave will be changing so the modulation is happening at the start of this test bench and at the end using this crystal detector demodulation will happen microwave signal and the basic modulating signal will be separated and that demodulated signal you can observe on cro so i can change the amplitude using even amplitude knob and i can change the frequency using frequency knob and if i change repeller voltage you can see the output will vanishes to zero because we know replace system oscillator will not produce a continuous output it produces output for some specific uh, time that we used to call as some mode numbers right so if you change your repeller voltage in the same direction so again you will observe another mode is occurring again zero if you keep changing your repeller voltage towards zero in the reverse direction again you will see the square wave will occur that is for third mode again zero so similarly we get the different modes using this replace piston oscillator and one thing can be noted the repeller voltage can be varied in one directional direction only to avoid any hysteresis in the output okay so one more thing as we change the repeller voltage for first mode the output will be maximum as we move our repeller voltage in uh, from high repel high negative value towards zero output voltage will reduce or output power of the replace piston oscillator is reducing that is also apparent from this square wave pattern okay now let me change the square wave or from am to let us say fm from modulation am i will switch to fm and in this case again i can control the modulating signal frequency and amplitude by using these two knobs and repeller voltage can be varied by using this knob at this time on cro it is expected that you will get the sawtooth wave so that is the internal setup generally used for reflex piston power supplies so in this case in case of fm the output instead of square wave it will be in form of sort of way so this is the case of frequency modulated signal now last one which is now external modulation so i will switch this modulation knob to external and i will connect the function generator to the piston power supply with this bnc cable 
I have set it to sine wave of some arbitrary value and this sine wave amplitude and frequency can be varied by using these two knobs and now on CRO we can clearly see there is a sine wave pattern. We can vary the repeller voltage to see the sine wave pattern on CRO. We can change the amplitude and frequency. We can change the amplitude and frequency by using the frequency and amplitude knobs available on your function generator. As you can see, I am moving the frequency control knob and I am moving the amplitude knob on function generator. So this is how we can see. Now let me change it to other function from sine to square wave. So now it is changed to square and you can see on the CRO screen it is a square wave. Again its frequency and amplitude can be changed. So it depends on which type of modulation you wanted to use with your replaced piston power supply. It may be AM, FM or external that can be always possible and you can demodulate the signal using this detector and you will get the demodulated signal on the CRO. So as I said at the start you have two options to change the frequency of this replaced piston oscillator. One is by changing the cavity dimensions by varying this uh, plunger it is called as a mechanical tuning and other option you can vary the repeller voltage and if you vary this repeller voltage output frequency will also changes. So that is called as electronic tuning range. So all these VI characteristic uh, power versus frequency relationship of deflex piston oscillator we will see in our upcoming video. Thanks for watching. That's all for this video.